in the next part of this course, we are going to turn this simple truss structure into a truss with variable height, which means that we are going to move these points of the lower court in the vertical direction so that they follow the shape of a certain curve. So now the question is, okay, but um, how can we define this curve in Grasshopper? So there are different approaches to do this. Perhaps the most straightforward possibility would be to use a mathematical expression. And uh, you can come to this math category here in our component panel, components panel, and you can see how many mathematical operations you, we can use. But what we are going to do is to use the expression component instead, this one. So this is a very special component because we can see here we have our input parameters that are going to be actually the variables of the mathematical expression that we are defining inside of this component. And it becomes even more interesting because if we zoom in, we can see that we have now additional options which allow us to add new parameters or variables or remove existing ones. So in this case, we have X and Epsilon, sorry, X and Y. And now if we make double click into this component, we can define a mathematical function here. In this case, we are going to choose a parabola. So let's just type X to the power of two, like that. And okay, and now we are getting an error here, but this is because X has no value. So if, imagine that we assign a value of three to our X parameter or X variable, and the result would be of course nine. So this is basically how this expression component works. Since we are using a mathematical function, now the question is, okay, but how can we get these X values from our points so that we can move them in the vertical direction according to this function? Okay, so in order to get these values, what we are going to do is to use the point coordinates, but we are not going to use the absolute coordinates, but we are going to use the position of these points along this uh, original curve. Okay, so let me explain how this works. So I'm going to define a, an extra curve in Rhino, like that. And now I'm going to come to this uh, curve category in the components panel, and I'm going to select the evaluate curve component. So now let's reference Let's reference this uh, curve from Grasshopper, from Rhino, I'm sorry. So we do right click, set one curve. Here we go. We plug this Rhino object into our Grasshopper component. And now we have to define one parameter. So this is going to be the position of the point in the curve that we want to evaluate. So I'm going to define a slider between zero and uh, one, let's say how it goes. Okay. So first when the parameter is zero, of course we get the point at the start of our curve. And if we this, if we make this parameter, um, bigger and bigger, you can see how the point moves along the curve. So now the question would be, okay, but what is the maximum value for the parameters of our curve? Okay. So by default, it is the length of this curve. So we could either choose values for this parameter between zero and the curve length, or we have a very interesting option in Grasshopper, which is to reparameterize the curve. So if we do, if we make a right click here into this curve parameter, now we have several options here that we will see later on. Now we are just going to click on reparameterize. And if we do that, the parameters of the curve go between zero and one right now. So we can see how we are uh, modifying this um, curve parameter and we are able to choose a point along the whole curve. So this is basically the concept that we are going to use to get our X values for our points. But we are not going to use the evaluate curve component. Instead, what, sorry, what we are going to do is to get the directly the output of this divide curve parameter that if you remember we used at the very beginning with our with our original line from Rhino. 
So, because if we take a closer look, actually, we can see here how each parameter is related to its point that we are getting from this curve. So the first parameter could be zero, of course, from the first point, and then it increases until one. So, okay, we have now our X values, and let's plug them into our uh, function here, which is X to the power of two. And what we want to do is, of course, to end up moving these points in the vertical direction. So let's get the move component once again, and these are my original points that I want to move. And I have to define a vector in the vertical direction. So this is the vector set, set sorry. And I can just connect it here. And you can see how I am moving my points. But of course, this is not the, <laughs> the shape that we're looking for because uh, this point has the coordinate, let's say the parameter zero. So it's not going it's not being moved with our definition because we have just defined this parabola as x to the power of two. So let's uh, do double click into this component to adjust this formula so that the points follow the parabola that we are looking for. And of course, the point that we don't want to move is the point that is in the middle, which has the parameter 0 0.5, like that. Uh, sorry, but the 0 0.5 comes here. Okay, so now the point in the middle has a 0 0.5 as value, so this is 0 to the power of 2, which is of course, sorry, which is of course a 0. And then the points, let's say the last point, could be 0 0.5 to the power of 2, but what we want to do is to displace that um, to move that uh, last point, not just by this value, by this value of 0 0.5 to the power of 2, but by the value of the height of our truss. So we just have to multiply this by the height of our truss and divide it to 0 0.5 to the power of 2. Sorry. And now, of course, we are going to get an error because we have to change this y into an 8 and we have to plug here the height of our truss structure. Okay, so now it seems like it's working and our points are actually following this um, geometry that we have just defined as a parabola. And basically, in order to adjust our uh, truss geometry, this is very easy in Grasshopper because we just have to replace our original points from this um, divide curve component from by with our new points. So let me get these guys down here. And if I do something like that, you can see how we're updating our trust geometry. And let me hide these original parameters or uh, objects that we don't need anymore. So this is basically how our, how our trust would look like. And of course, we can modify the height or we can <laughs> even move the original points and you can see how we are updating our truss geometry like that. Very nice. And if we come back to this uh, divide curve component, you can see that we are getting our point parameters automatically between zero of one. But to make sure that we don't get any other values when we update our definition, we are going to um, do right click on this input curve parameter and we are going to reparameterize uh, this uh, input curve, just in case, as we saw before. Okay, so this is one possibility to use a mathematical function to define our curve, but there is another approach in Grasshopper, which in my opinion um, provides more freedom to play with different uh, curve geometries. And it is basically to use the graph mapper. So we are just going to um, do the, make double click into the canvas and we are going to select the graph mapper. And if you are interested, of course, this guy is in the parameters tab in the input subcategory right here. Okay, so as you can see in the icon, we are going to use this guy to define different kind of uh, mathematical function or even um, curves, let's say. So in order to choose a curve, we have to do right click into this uh, guy, into this component and now we have to come here to graph types. And now here we can choose between different graph types. 
and okay you can take a look into all of them if you want but in my opinion the more interesting one or the more flexible in this case is the first one the bezier so in this case you can see that we are getting a, a curve in this in this graph mapper and we can use these handles to modify the geometry of this curve like that okay so we can define different curves here but now <laughs> we have to see how this component or this graph mapper actually works. So what we are going to do is to provide a list here. And of course, we are going to get an output list of this graph mapper. So the input list is going to be in the x axis and it has to be between zero or one. Otherwise, if the values are higher, they are going to get the value of one by default. So again, now we have to take the our um, list of parameters once again, which goes already between zero and one, like that. Now you can see that these uh, red lines indicate where our uh, point parameters are. So zero and then the next one would be, sorry, in zero point, yeah, uh, 125, like that and so on and so forth. And what we are getting as amp output, let me show this into a panel, is the values that we are getting with when these uh, red lines intersect with the curve that we are defining with our handles right here. So for instance, the first value would be zero or one, sorry, as we can see, because the vertical axis also goes between zero and one. And the next value would be probably 0 0.7, yeah, almost 0 0.7 and so on and so forth. So this is how this graph mapper works. And now we can try actually replacing the values of the mathematical function with the values of this graph mapper here. Let's see how uh, what happens now. And of course, it's not <laughs> what we're looking for because the shape that we are seeing in Rhino is by no means the shape that we are uh, defining in our graph mapper. And the reason for that is that the shape that we're looking for was, let's say, between uh, zero and the uh, height of our truss that we were defining here. So the output values should be, in this case, between zero and one 0.86 and our output values are actually between um, between one and this uh, minimum value here and which is actually 0 0.56 so what we have to do is to remap these up to values so that they go not just between 0 0.56 and 1 but between 0 and 1.86 so in order to remap these numbers we have to use the uh, remap numbers component. I think it makes sense. Okay, so let's see how this works. Now we are uh, starting working with domain. So we already saw how a curve domain works. Okay, because we selected uh, this parameter between zero and one and so on and so forth. And now we are going to use domains to transform the values that we are getting from this graph mapper. So these are our values. And the source domain is the domain of these values. In this case, uh, we have to select between 0 0.56, as we said, the lowest value and the highest one, which is one. So these are basically the, the extreme values and we can get them with another component, which is the bounds, oh, sorry, the bounds uh, component right here. And again, if you want to take a look to all these components related to mathematical domains, you can come here to the mathematical tab and here they are. But we're just going to use these two. So if we plug the output values of this graph mapper into our bounds component, we can see how the domain goes between actually between 0 0.54 and 1. So this is our source domain that we're going to use to remap our numbers. And the target domain, as we say, as we said, goes between 0 and 1.8. So let's get the construct domain now. The domain start is 0, which is the value that it is assigned by default. 
and the domain end is 1.86. So this is our target domain. We plug these guys here and now let's take a, let's use a panel to see how this output looks like. And you can see how now the, the points, so the, the point with the highest value, with a value of 1, now it has got the value of 1.86, which is the value <coughs> that we have defined for our, um, for our domain as the maximum value. And now the lowest point is actually 0. It's not a 0 0.54 anymore, but 0, which is the domain start that we defined here. So I think that now these output values make more sense and we can try connecting them to our uh, vector component to move the points accordingly. So if we do that, we can see how now the shape of our curve actually has uh, something to do <laughs> with what we are defining in this graph mapper here. And of course, now you can try playing with these handles here and you can see how we are updating, automatically updating the truss geometry. So you can play with very um, irregular geometries, but if you want to define a symmetrical truss, you have to take care that the handles are symmetrical to each other. Something like that, for instance. And of course, another possibility would be to just define a half of the curve and then replicate it symmetrically. But we are going, if, if you want it to be more precise, but we are going to leave it like that, I think.